So just for reference, here's our double ground signal here. And you'll notice our ground signal is one, one A and one B for our two routes. It was common practice on a lot of railways to save on wire runs and to be economical on certain uh, facets of signalling, to be able to clear two signals with one lever. And this is done quite a lot on heritage railways up and down the country. Um, I mean, the first place I actually saw this was at Clacton on Sea. Um, there was a signal over in the sidings that used the same principle of floating wheel detection. Floating wheel detection is probably not the best name for this, but that's the name given, and there are other names as well. Basically, the premise that you can use one lever to clear two signals. Now, I don't know if you can just see down there, we'll go down in a minute and have a look. We have our double ground signal down there in the sidings, and it protects the loop back into the platform, or coming out onto the main line. And it's set entirely off the lie of the point, and it's entirely mechanically done. There are two ways of doing this. I'll show you this on a drawing. Now I mentioned there are two ways you can do this. So, just for reference, here's number one. So we have our lever in our signal box. And what we can do here, we can use the lever tail itself to do the work. So here we have a draft wheel on our lever tail. And what around the draft wheel we will have our wire, it goes out to our signals. I'll just draw some small pulley wheels there just to make life a lot easier. And here we have our mechanical detector out on the ground, and we'll say this one is the normal detector. That will go to one signal, and we will also have our reverse detector that will go out to our second signal. So, as you can appreciate, as you operate this lever, it will pull either the normal or the reverse, depending on which point it's free which is locked. As you can only have, have one set of points, normal or reverse, what you'll end up with is one side will be made for that route to go and one side will be anchored. The anchored side will be trapped. So basically, let's imagine a giant imaginary nail. This side cannot move. So as we pull our draft wheel, this side is fixed and cannot move. This side, however, can be pulled for clearing our signal. Now this tends to be used more on main signals than shunt signals but it will work either way and again you tend to find this if your signal is very close to the signal box because this is a quite a lot of wire if you imagine going line side. Let's just look at this for instance. If you imagine this piece of wire here from our lever to our detector, well in our signal box, here's our lever, there's our detector right down there. So you'd have to double that length of wire up. So it's not economical to have that system and this used in this employment. So this tends to be for close signals to the signal box. Now the other way you can do it, which is the way we've done it out on the ground. Again, you can have your signal. You just have your single wire that goes out and on the ground, it has a floating base. Now, as as you've seen outside, it's mounted on some roller stools in the ground. And this is free to float around quite happily. Attached to that, we have our draft wheel, which is this here, and we then tag that to our signal detectors. That means you only have one signal wire trackside, but you do have a lot of loss around this wheel here. That's where you've got to be very careful of. Again, this system doesn't just use normal and reverse. You can have midway signals. So for instance, um, if I were to take you to Limerick uh, Junction in the Republic of Ireland, and you'll see a picture of this next. The signals there, number 42, for instance, sits normal in the middle of the frame. And you can have reverse either way. So this would be 1A, 1B route. And again, this can be done differently, depending on how you do it. You can have two draft wheels. So again, you could tie this one off, say, to the lead off timber, tie that off to lead off timber. And you could have your roots going out as such. So there are loads of different ways of doing this. Um, one example where I think this is used is on the Bala Lake Railway. Um, they managed to compress a 
small lever frame, ground frame, into use on their passing loop. And it's got a, a miniature bracket signal that's worked this way. So there are different ways you can do this. Again, quite a lot of this was using the Republic of Ireland, where I've seen it. And you'll see that example next. So here we are out on the ground, down there is our signal box. And coming in is our single wire here, which goes onto this, which is what I call our floating base. And this is copied off one version that I saw. And quite simply how we've made this, we have our return wheel, which goes from our signal on one side, chain around, and then back to the signal on the other side. Here we have four roller stools sat in the ground, and a little bit of a rodding affair made up so that this is free and floating. And as you can see, it just moves itself quite happily. And our signal is pulled down there. It actually pulls onto the end of the framework. It pulls the whole thing as one. I'll just show you there. So as you can see, the signal wire will pull on that. And that will take the tension up in the slack wire around the wheel. You notice our two chains that come off this, so we have our chain around. This one wire here goes to our left hand detector, and the other wire goes to our right hand detector. And what happens is that because one detector will always be lined up, depending on the lie of the points, one detector will always be anchored because that route isn't set with the points. The one that is anchored will not be able to be moved. So in this case here, as you can see, this one's lined up. There's a slot in there. This one is anchored. So when we pull the signal wire from the signal box, as it pulls the framework that way, the anchored wire cannot move. The free wire can. Now this is where there's a little bit of an interesting uh, design or flaw in the system that you've got to account for. You must have a certain amount of slack in this, obviously. But when you're pulling the wire, unlike a normal signal where it will start to work straight away, what you have on the floating wheel system is you have a lot of loss to start with as it anchors this first wire. And then it takes up the slack in the second wire. If you have it too tight, it just won't work. You'll end up jamming the detectors, it won't go back on the stops, which is the other important thing. So you've got to have a little bit of slack in the system. And we can achieve that, you'll find that as you pull your signal, it'll be the last few seconds, almost the last three quarters of the pull that it'll come off at. This works better on ground signals because they have a lot less movement. If you're gonna use this to work um, to main signal arms, it's better doing it the other way, which is on the tail of the lever under the signal box, which I'll show you now. All I'm gonna do now is just operate this manually just so you can get an idea of it. I'm not gonna give it a great pull because I haven't got a great, uh, great lift on this from where I am on the ground as opposed to the lever but as you can see as I pull the frame it starts to take up the tension and you can see that bottom arm there is the one that will kick 